Hey everyone, this is Gwen and welcome to the sew along video for my early spring design with Nomi patterns, the ME 2021. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of sewing view A and that's this dress that I'm wearing right here, the dress with the bishop sleeves and the bow in the back. So a little bit of note on the fabric, this version right here is made using quilting cotton, but in this video, I'm using a thrifted bed sheet to make my dress. Now the thrifted bed sheet is basically a cotton blend, but it's got a little bit more of a drape and flow than regular quilting cotton. And we'll be able to see the difference in how the dress falls and looks at the end of the video. Now let's get started. Make sure you have the following pieces cut. The bodice front in the main fabric, the bodice back in the main fabric, and the bodice front in the lining fabric. Take some time to mark out the stitch line for the neckline of the bodice front because this is going to help with the sewing process a lot later. You'll also need to cut the bodice back pieces in the lining fabric, the skirt front in the main fabric, the skirt back in the main fabric, and two pieces of the sleeves in the main fabric. For this version of the dress, I've chosen to sew the sleeve cuffs and the bow in a contrast fabric. It's gonna be cute! Here's the front bodice piece. Start by applying interfacing to the neckline and sew stay stitches along the neckline. Next, using a longer stitch length on your machine, sew basting stitches along the under bust area where we're gonna be gathering later. Continue working with the bodice back pieces. Over here, I've applied interfacing along the neckline and sewed stay stitches along the neckline. Next, sew the waist darts on the bodice back pieces. For your darts to look nice and sharp, make sure you tie a knot at the end of each dart and press the darts towards the center. Now we're going to put the bodice back and front together. Place the back and front pieces right sides together and sew them together along the shoulder seams and side seams. When you're done with that, this is how your bodice should be looking. Now repeat the same process with the lining fabric pieces. So things are starting to get exciting here because the bodice is starting to come together. You notice that I didn't add any basting stitches for gathering the under bust for the lining fabric pieces because I have a nice lazy sewing hack for you coming up later. It's now time to sew the lining to the bodice. Place the lining and main fabric bodice pieces right sides together, making sure that you have them aligned along the side seams and the shoulder seams. Over here, I've also taken some time to mark out the point where the seam allowance along the back neckline and the zipper edge intersects because this is where I'm going to start and stop sewing. Remember to backstitch and just follow the seam allowance guide on your sewing machine to help you with your sewing. If you had taken the time to mark out the stitch line on the bodice front, then once you get to the front, it's super easy. Just follow your markings and pivot as needed. It's looking good! Now before we continue, I like to apply a little bit of fray check to the three deepest points of the neckline. One, two, and three. This helps to secure the stitches by just a little bit more because we need to clip the three deepest points of the neckline as close as we can without actually cutting the stitches. Next, turn the bodice right sides out and understitch the lining. Give the neckline a good press with the fabric pieces wrong sides together so the neckline will look nice and neat. If you can feel some puckering in the seam allowance along the neckline after pressing, then you need to turn the bodice wrong sides out and trim the seam allowance. The goal is to make sure that this cute sweetheart neckline sits really nice and flat on our chest. There much better. Now let's keep sewing. We're gonna start working on the skirt. Begin by sewing the darts on the skirt front and skirt back. Just like before, tie a knot at the end of each dart and press the darts towards the center. After sewing and pressing the darts, here's how the skirt front looks. And these are the skirt back pieces. Oops, I think I forgot to press one of these darts. Can you tell which one? I'm going to do that before moving on to the next step. Now we're going to start sewing the skirt together. Place the skirt front and skirt back pieces right sides together and sew along the side seams. We have another half of the dress done. It's time to put the skirt and the bodice together. 
pin the bodice to the skirt, right sides together along the waist seam. Make sure you have the bodice and the skirt matched up at the notches and the side seams. You will also need to pay special attention to the section of the underbust that needs to be gathered. This is how I like to do it. I start off by pinning the notches and with the pins in place, I then start pulling on the basting stitches slowly and gather up the underbust section until the bodice fits the skirt perfectly. The volume of gathers that I have over here might look smaller than yours and that's only because I did a small bust adjustment to this pattern. I always have to make a small bust adjustment to all of my sewing patterns and that's because I'm an honorary member of the itty bitty community. Now this looks perfect to me and we're gonna sew the pieces together. And this is how it looks right now. Side seams are matched up, darts are matched up, and the gathered section is directly above the front skirt darts. Zipper time! The pattern actually calls for an invisible zipper and the instruction walks you through the process of installing one. I like using a regular zipper sometimes, so I'm going to walk you through my process of sewing with a regular zipper. This notch over here actually represents where the end of the zipper goes. I have sewn basting stitches between the top of the dress and this notch right here, and regular stitches between the notch and the skirt hem. Next, I pressed the center back seam open then I pin the right side of the zipper in place and just start sewing. You'll notice that I don't have any extra pins or extra basting stitches but I'm moving my fingers a lot because I'm actually using my fingers to feel for the teeth of the zipper. Right now what I'm doing is just sewing the right side of the dress to the right zipper tape and the teeth of the zipper is actually right here under the left side of the dress. I keep sewing and keep working my way down until I get to the end of the zipper. Then I pivot, sew a couple of stitches across horizontally and I pivot my work again. Now here's my trick to pivoting. I actually like to leave my needle halfway in the dress before pivoting um, because this helps to make sure that the stitches and the thread don't get shifted while I'm doing the pivoting. So over here I continue to feel for the zipper and right now it continues to be on this side of the dress and then I keep working my way up. Um, once I get close to the top I undo a couple of basting stitches then with the needle in the dress I lift my zipper foot up and then I unzip the zipper just by a couple of inches just so the zipper head doesn't get in my way as I am sewing the top part of the zipper tape. Don't forget to backstitch and of course undo the basting stitches. Now with the zipper installed we're going to start working on cleaning up the lining. The way that I'm finishing the lining here is also a little different from the written instructions. I start off by paying attention to the top of the zipper. I stitch really close to the under stitching line right here. This is just so that the top of the zipper tape will be secured together with the rest of the dress. And when you turn it right sides out, you should have a nice clean slope looking like this. Do the same for the other side and don't forget to also trim off the top of the zipper tape so that the seam allowance doesn't get too bulky. And here's how it looks. Yay! And now we're going to start sewing the lining to the dress along the empire waistline. Start by folding the seam allowance of the bodice lining to the inside of the dress. Now, this is the clean finished look that I'm going for. I held that in place and then I took my other hand and then stuck it in to the inside of the dress through the opening along the center back. Over here, I am just holding on to the seam allowance of both the bodice main and bodice lining pieces. I pinned them together, matching them along the side seams and at the notches. And when I got to the part where the underbust of the bodice lining is meant to be gathered, I simply folded it neatly like this. And then I stitched the lining and the main fabric pieces together along the waist seam really close to the original stitch line. 
it's a little tricky to sew across the entire width of the waist seam in one go so I usually do it like um, one half at a time so here I have one half done and then I continue with the other half um, folding the seam allowance in and then sticking my hand to the inside of the dress along the center back then matching the lining and the main fabric pieces at the notches along the darts and the side seams just like before. Ideally I should have the little folds kind of like mirrored but I think I can accept this little imperfection today. Finally, I finished this lining along the center back by hand stitching it down. On hindsight, I think I might have been able to use the same strategy, but this time reaching my hand to the inside of the dress through the armhole opening. Does that make sense? You can try that and let me know what you think. Sewing the skirt hem is pretty easy and straightforward. Start by folding one and one quarter worth of fabric along the hem towards the wrong side, then turn the raw edge in by a quarter inch. Now because the hem is a little bit curved, you might end up having spots where there's puckering of the fabric on the wrong side of the dress and that is completely normal. Let's start working on the sleeves. Take the sleeve cuff, fold it right sides together, and sew it along the short edge right here. Press the seam open, then turn under half an inch along the edge without the notches. Trim this to a quarter inch, and at this stage, your sleeve cuff should look like this. Now take the sleeve, fold it right sides together, and sew along the underarm seam. Press the seam open and then we're going to sew two rows of basting stitches along the sleeve hem between the two big dots. Slowly gather the bottom of the sleeve until the opening is small enough to fit the sleeve cuff. Pin the sleeve cuff to the opening of the sleeve right sides together, matching them at the dots and the seams. Now the sleeve opening is tiny and the space is tight, but I just wanted to show you how I usually get this done. I like to have the right side of the sleeve facing out, but I am actually sewing on the inside of the sleeve. I actually sew on the wrong side of the sleeve. And for the gathers to look nice and cute, I make sure that the gathers actually run horizontally across my sewing horizontally across like this and I, I do this slowly and I adjust it as I go this is just sped up so take your time when you're working on the sleeve cuff over here we're not done yet but can we take a moment to talk about how cute a hack with wider sleeve cuffs will look look at that I love it next we're gonna fold the sleeve cuff in half to the inside of the sleeve and then stitch it down in place. Now we're going to be working with a very tight space again and my approach is similar to the previous step but this time I actually have the sleeve inside out so this is the wrong side of the sleeve and I sew it on the inside which turns out to be the right side over here and I really just sew like a couple of stitches each time and I adjust as I go along because it's important that we catch the sleeve cuff on both the right side and the inside. Next, sew basting stitches along the top of the sleeves. The points at which the gathers are meant to be are actually marked as a circle, but I like to just cut notches in my fabric because I think that's faster. Then gather the top of the sleeves until the sleeves are small enough to fit the armhole. Pin the sleeve to the armhole opening right sides together, matching them at the notches and the seams and sew them together. <gasps> yes, this is how it looks. Now moving on, this is the last and final step. We're going to be sewing the bow. Now here's what you need to know about sewing the bow for the dress. There is hand sewing involved. I know, I know, but it's going to be so worth the time and effort. This is how you do it. So take the large bow piece and fold it in half lengthwise. Stitch across the long edge and trim the seam allowance in half. Next, Turn the bow piece inside out. This side here with the seam is the wrong side. We want to fold the piece right sides together and sew the short edge together. Now because it's going to be quite a number of layers, try to have the seam allowance um, turned to opposite directions to reduce bulk. Sew across with 5 8 inch seam allowance and again trim the seam allowance in half. Turn the bow piece inside out and this is the body of the bow. 
You will also notice that I'm making this bow without interfacing. I made the bow on the first version of my dress, which is the orange dress on the pattern envelope with interfacing. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you side by side the bow with interfacing and the bow without interfacing on the back of the dress, how they look, so you can compare and see which look you like better. Even after trimming the seam allowance and pressing it down, I find that sometimes this little seam allowance still tends to like stick up. So I like to add another row of stitches for this little seam allowance to sit down really nice and flat. You can gather the middle of the bow with a row of basting stitches like the instructions, but if you're like me and you like things to be in control, you can hand fold the middle and then hand sew the folds in place. I just want the bow to be folded in this precise, exact manner. Now we're gonna sew that little piece of fabric that goes over the middle of the bow. Fold it in half, matching the notches, sew across, and trim the seam allowance in half. Turn this fabric piece right sides out and press it such that the seam sits in the center. The side with the seam is basically the wrong side and we're going to take this piece of fabric and wrap it around the middle of the knot like this. Make sure the ends are folded in and hand sew it in place with slip stitch. Finally, hand sew the snap buttons for securing the bow on the back of the dress. And here's how the dress looks. While sewing one snap button is enough to hold the bow in place on the back of the dress, personally, I like to sew an extra snap button just to balance the position of the bow out. Here is how the bow looks on the dress with just one snap button added. And here is how the bow looks with a total of two snap buttons added, one on each side of the zipper. So for this version of the dress, because I'm going for a softer look in the bow, I opted for no interfacing and I only had one snap button sewn on each side of the zipper. Now for the orange version of the dress, like I said, I made it with quilting cotton and I did add the interfacing to the bow as well. So overall, the bow has more of a perky look and on top of having that one snap button on the side of the zipper, I also added two more snap buttons, but this time at the ends of the bow rather than in the knot itself. So at the end of the day, the number of snap buttons and whether you want to add interfacing, it really depends on the kind of look that you're going for for your dress. So I hope you found this sew along video helpful. I've got lots of great tutorials and hacks planned for this sewing pattern, which I am so excited to show you. So do follow me on all the social channels to stay updated. And don't forget to check out all the other amazing designs by the designers of Nomi patterns. I will see you in the next one. Bye.